Moments ago, the House passing the 9-11 first responders bill by a vote of 402 to 12. We are joined now by one of the champions of the bill, John Stewart. And John, you're standing beside uh, John Field and other first responders there. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this obviously passed by a huge bipartisan margin. And you've been so dedicated to making sure that this bill gets passed. Love your thoughts today. Uh, listen, I think uh, the hard work that everybody's put in over the past 15 years, John Field's been doing this 15 years. He's given his life to it, uh, his le half of his foot and one of his kidneys. Um, I think none of us feel like the job is done. We've got to get past the Senate. Uh, Senator McConnell has said that he will get this done by their summer recess. That's August 2nd, so we're going to take him at his word. Uh, we're here with Lou Alvarez's brother and uh, sister. Um, and we're all just trying to uh, keep focused with our eye on getting this community the help that they need and making sure that they never have to feel this burden and stress uh, again. Yeah, Mitch McConnell had said, um, I think this is from a little while ago, he said, the first responders who rushed into danger on September 11, 2001, are the very definition of American heroes and patriots. The Senate has never forgotten the Victim Compensation Fund, and we aren't about to start now. Nothing about our shared goal to provide for these heroes is remotely partisan. We will consider this important legislation soon. And as you said, John, they expect to do that before the end of this uh, the recess. Um, the bill is going to be called Never Forget the Heroes. And I was wondering, when you're sitting there talking to them, and this bill goes through 2090, um, it's just the least that we could do. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's right. I think there's, there's always going to be a little bit of shock that it's been this hard a fight and it's taken this long and that, you know, the only consideration here should be, is there a need? And the need is there and the need is urgent. And I think... You know, these uh, men and women have given so much to knock down doors to try and get people to listen mm -hmm. and to understand how much the need is, is still there. Uh, you know, Lou Alvarez died, you know, a week ago, mm -hmm. and his death was as much a part of the terrorist attack on 9-11 as those that passed that day. Absolutely. And we have to remember that for this community, that day hasn't ended. And they live this nightmare over and over again mm -hmm. And, and still to this day. And it's their bravery and it's their resilience that I think inspires me and, and John and, and everybody else back here, uh, you know, to keep, to keep working and to keep fighting for it. And do you feel like in the legislation that the government is able to make sure that anybody who would just despicably try to defraud any of these victims, that they'll be able to safeguard against that? So th this program, the one thing to remember about the program is it already exists. So the VCF program already exists. It's been administrated through the Justice Department, and there is no fraud. Uh, the paymaster, the special paymaster, Rupa Bhattacharya, testified in front of Congress on the same day that we all testified that there have been no cases of fraud and abuse. There are, it's a really well-run uh, program. It's faithful to the statute, it's fair to the claimants, and it's respectful to the taxpayers. And it's run with uh, a real robust certification process, and uh, it, it's incredibly effective. The truth of the matter is, all Congress has to do is pass it. The program is already there, it already exists, mm -hmm. it already runs well, it's just running out of money and is set to expire, and we can't let that happen because families are already getting their compensation cut by 70 percent. If I and, could just ask you one last question. Um, your sure. dedication to this is obviously inspiring to a lot of people, and if there are those watching who think maybe not necessarily this particular issue, but that talk a little bit about what it's like to dedicate yourself to something and to focus on it and to show up for these people every day that you can make a difference. It's everything. Uh, you know, it, it takes this whole team, and it takes John Fields come down here. How many times, John? Today's 280 times. 280 times. Wow. Um, there is a great dysfunction here, and there are a lot of really good people in that room trying to do the right thing that I think have become lost in procedure and, and process. Mm -hmm. um, oddly enough, this is a program that is not troubled by administration, it's troubled by politics. And if we can help straighten out the politics, these things can be administered very well. Uh, so it, it's a lesson in a, a town that I think sometimes becomes very eccentric and insular mm -hmm. and doesn't necessarily remember what it looks like to the outside eye. 
All right. Well, John Stewart and all of you, uh, thank you so much. And we will be watching thank to you. see if, when the Senate holds that vote before the recess. Thank you. Thanks for giving us a voice. Mm -hmm.